So before we get started, um, join me in a word of prayer, okay? Father God, thank you for bringing us here this morning, Lord, just to fellowship, to learn, learn about you, and to hear testimonies that, Father, you've um, given us. Lord, I ask and I invite you with me at this time, Father. May you give me the confidence and the ability, Father, to relay your messages to the sisters that are here, Lord. And Father, but Father, I ask that, Father, your wisdom and your Holy Spirit will fill me with your presence, Father, that the words that I speak this morning to my sisters here, Lord, that they come from you, but not of my own understanding, Father. And I lift up everyone here into your hands, Father. May you open up their hearts and their ears to hear the message that, Father, you have prepared for us this morning, Lord. I put everything into your hands, and I pray in Jesus Christ's name, amen. So our workshop is Seek to Know God Through Mental Stability. I am the Tanya J for Bay Punching Sacramento Mong Alliance Church. You know, the specific call me to take on this role. It's such a role that in China, I'm like, like God, why are you selecting me to, to come lead Punching Sacramento? And I took some time to talk to God. I'm like, you know, it's because God had planted this conference in my heart for so many years. So, you know, I surrender myself to God. I'm like, God, you know, you lead the way. I'm going to give myself to you. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm here. I'm going to take the lead, and I'm just so blessed to have Justin and Jay behind me. I'm just a human being. You guys are also, we are working in this together. So, you know, I'm so blessed to have you guys attending this women's conference because this is a conference that God has planted for you. Okay? He specifically chose you here today so that you can be renewed. You know, this is your time to renew your faith with Christ. I want to ask, I want to have you guys ask yourselves, why am I here today? Okay. Think about it, but ask yourself, why am I here at the Women's Conference? You know, I believe that, you know, a lot of times, there's a lot of things that go, you know, get a jemon don't say shia or small churches, well, worship concerts, and sometimes we know about it, but we choose not to go. And when we choose not to go, we're missing out on God's blessing. And I truly believe that you're here for a purpose. Maybe there's something missing in your life. Maybe you have, maybe and maybe God's using you to be a light to others. So there's a blessing and a pers- uh, purpose that you're here today. And I know with that, I know that you're here today. I'm sure everybody raised a hand. My, my other option was raise your hand if you have never or you don't experience stress in, or anxiety in your life. I'm sure everybody, Ying Gina, y'all. You know, Jong Dai Nick, Gusin Tanya Ching Hai. Stress is short term. It's more of like, you know, maybe like you're trying to meet a work deadline. Maybe you're trying, you're trying to. Um, work on a, a school project. Maybe you had like a, a fight with a loved one. So those are short-term stress. Anxiety is long-term stress. Emotional stress that makes you feel like um, you're super depressed. You know, it won't go away. What are you monkey, monkey, king? You're not able to sleep. You know, you have panic attacks, um, muscle tension, unable to, to work. Um, I believe that we all face stress and anxiety in our personal lives. You know, whether it's, you know, friends and family in our uh, professional lives, school, even, even at church, you know, and, you know, there's so many things that's going on that, yeah, you do, you experience, you know, maybe short-term stress, stress that you may face. You know, I'm not a mental health specialist, you know, but I'm here to share my personal testimony 
as well as how God has helped me overcome you know, my own mental instability. And that's as you know, a daughter, a wife, and as a mother. I'll be referencing uh, you know, God's words of truth that has continued to breathe his life into my life. I'm sure we're familiar with this biblical passage. It's in Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm not sure if you guys can see on the screen. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. You know, this passage gives, gives us confirmation that whatever we're going through, whether it's good or bad, you know, there's a purpose for that. You know, God knows our future. You know, he knows our future, and he allows challenges in our lives to help us grow with our faith in Christ. Not just that, but for us to develop a healthier relationship with Christ. You know, I want to ask you guys, you know, are you willing to accept God's plans for you no matter their circumstances? A lot of times, you like, you know, God, like, why? Yeah, go and experience these trials. But, you know, if we are able to think back, it's because we, we won't be able to grow in our faith unless we experience trials, and, you know, in our, in our lives. Um, I truly believe that the Holy Spirit um, really moved Nekasibu, Jane, and myself to share the message from Genesis, you know, from Genesis, the fall of man. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the passage. Okay, I'm not going to read word by word, but this is when Adam and Eve fell into temptation. Um, you know, I wanted to bring this to life because this is what... Um, <laughs> and, um, I wanted to share this passage because it's really how temptation started with human beings. And they fell into temptation because Eve, Eve, the wife of Adam, she was tempted, you know, by Satan. That's how, you know, the really fall into temptation. So that's an important reference for us to use that way. That way, really idea. Okay, how did, you know, temptation start? My question is, you know, is temptation preventable? I would say yes, temptation is preventable, you know, because we're able to separate out that's, you know, in our mind. Um, you know, again, I'm sharing this passage because this is really the purpose of this mental stability workshop. The enemy's temptation into our thoughts is critical in our lives and plays a major role in our faith. You know, temptation is not a sin. Sin is when we fall into the enemy's um, um, schemes. Now, I wanted to reference a biblical verse from Mark 1, 13. I'll summarize it. You know, this is when Jesus fell into temptation. Now, Jesus was at Don um, and he was in the desert, and this is when Satan tempted Jesus to turn stone into bread because he was, he was there for 40 days and he was hungry. You know, we are tempted by the enemy. Um, we should use Jesus Christ as, as an example that, hey, you know, if he was able to surpass that, I should be able to, you know, I should be able to move forward and be able to overcome any obstacles or temptations that are faced in my life. You know, like Eve in general. You know, as we are so genuine, caring, thoughtful. It's something, when I think about Eve falling to temptation, like how come, okay, I don't see how much Adam, because I think man, they just 
so naturally we're just so easily tempted because we're so genuine where we can we, we listen and we care we think about others so when I, when I think about that I'm like okay you know I think for we go through so much and the enemy uses us to, to, to deceive us you know a wife to our husband, you know, a friend to our sisters. Um, he is a, he's jealous of us because he knows that and we, we are strong, you know, we're, we're, we're warriors of, 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 you know, of God. You know, I wanted to share um, Satan's plans against us. You know, what is temptation? And I wanted to share this with you guys. Doubt. He makes us question God's word and goodness. Says, um, you know, just like how he tempted Eve, he used the serpent to come tempt Eve by getting to her thoughts. You know, making her doubt God's goodness. God loved, God loved Adam and Eve so much that he, God gave them everything. He gave them the whole garden, right? But then, to make her think that, you know, hey, God's restricting you from eating from that specific tree. Then it made, made Eve think, yeah why, yeah, why did God restrict me? And then, you know, as we know, it's because God didn't want you to not you're going to be just like God. You're going to know good and evil. So that's sometimes, as we face temptation in our lives, the enemy will use doubts for us to experience doubt. Discouragement, you know, makes us focus on our own problem rather than God. He makes our problems look bigger so that it distracts us and we forget who God is. You know, going back to Eve now, y'all, the problem for Eve was curiosity. You know, Eve said there, you know, God's drug, he's stingy. Why, why is he not allowing me to know his, you know, the, the, the right and the wrong? And that's something that Eve fell into temptation because she was curious about that. I want to share another bullet point. is diversion. It makes us think it, it makes the wrong things seem more important so that we don't see what's right. You know, just like Satan, you know, he made Eve forget about all that God has given her. And the only thing that she focused on was what God didn't give her. And, you know, in our lives, you know, we also go through that, you know, where sometimes, we focus on that specific issue or problem that we're going through. And we make that become our God versus you know, looking up to God instead, you know? And the last thing on here, let me see here. Oh, second to the last thing here is defeat. He makes us feel like a failure, so we don't want to try. Delay. He makes us putting off something or delaying our relationship with God. You know, when I think about delay, now y'all, like a sad song, sometimes I go to king, now y'all. And even just in the jail, like just to prepare this conference, we were spiritually attacked so many times. And in public speaking, like we were all so nervous, right? And we kept thinking to ourselves, you know, I can't do that, I can't do that. But when we delay ourselves, that's something that's delaying our relationship with God because we're focusing on the issue instead of what's, what's in reality. And, and that is really to focus back on God and not worry about our problems. I wanted to share with you guys my own experience of being captured by the enemy's scheme. These were feelings that I personally went through. You know, I believe basically we all have our own story and we've experienced different seasons in our lives and tr where we face trials and difficulties. It would obey it makes us feel so physically and um, mentally trained. You know, kind of joy of that makes because it's 
don't want to be around anybody. We just want to be left alone. And you know, this girl here, that's how I feel like, you know. So when I fell into the, um, the demon's scheme, I feel like no more go to hall. I feel like he locked me up into a cell and I was there by myself. No matter what was going through, I, I, didn't, I, I, was, I just wanted to space out from reality. And the reason why I'm sharing my story is because a lot of times we feel like nobody understands us. And for me, I feel like, you know, I was so ashamed of what I was going through. And I never really share my story with, you know, my family, my friends, because I was ashamed of what they might think of me, you know? And, you know, I, I think it was God's purpose to move in my heart to, you know what, to be that living testimony, to give my sisters in Christ the assurance that, hey, we are going to go through, we're going to face trials in our lives. You know, but God had really sent down Jesus Christ and he won victory on the cross. So I'm here to give you assurance that, you know, I'm not a perfect person. I go through my own trials as well. Even till today, I'm holding a position in the church. I'm not perfect. I continue to experience temptations from dancing you all the time. And what's making me be able to move forward is, you know, I have that faith and that hope in Christ. And God and the, you know, the Holy Spirit, he, he lives within all of us. As you see the bullet points here, these are my own personal experiences that I've gone through. You know, depression, anxiety, you know, I suffered panic attacks, insomnia. There were times where I was going through so much where my brain was always running and I would sleep at night, I would wake up just thinking about my problems, you know, about, okay, just being stressed at work, wake up dreaming of, of it. And that was, that was bad, that was horrible. It really affected my mental health. I experienced self-judgment. You know, I thought that I was a failure as a daughter. You know, growing up in a Christian family, you know, my parents looked up to me so much and I felt that, you know, so I felt like I was a failure daughter. You know, as a wife, you know, I feel like be a good wife for my husband. I, I went through that, even as a, a mother. You know, God blessed me with my, my children, and I feel like I wasn't a perfect or good enough mother for my children. So I, I, I was judging myself. And you know, this kind of ties back to the enemy's scheme. You know, he put thoughts in our head. He makes us see or make the problem bigger than what God has given us, you know, our blessings. Unhappiness. I've gone through that, you know. I don't know why I was always unhappy with my life. Even I know that my Jutu Fonko group with such a wonderful husband. You know, with my kids, you know, with life, with a job, you know. He's blessed me with so much, but, you know, when I fell into, when I was captured into Satan's scheme, you know, I was blinded. I forgot about all the blessings that God gave me. Discouragement. You know, I was discouraged about my life. Like, I was just so overwhelmed, you know. I think during that time that I went through my depression, you know, my first, I have my son, I was working full time, and you know, my husband worked long hours, so I feel like I was a single mom. There were so many on my plate that I felt like I didn't, I didn't have a breather, you know? And as time led and built on and built on, you know, that's, you know, kind of where it led me to great depression. You know, fear, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I was afraid of what people might think about me. You know, if my friends knew that I, I was depressed, you know, what would they think about me? Like, would they judge me? Like, like you know, I call myself a Christian, but why am, like, am I being like a two-faced? You know, that's, I, I had all these negative thoughts in my mind. You know, but that was the truth. That was the enemy's 
That's the enemy's lies. Shame of depression. And, you know, I went through such dark times that I was so ashamed because, you know, when we go through deep, deep, deep depression that surpasses our control, there's time where you want to disappear from, you know, this world. And I went through that. I was, you know, I had thoughts of suicide. And that was something that I used to be so ashamed of. It's like, not even my friends' family knew that. You know, I would go through, through trials of suicidal thoughts. You know, but you know, forget that. You know, I'm, I'd rather just disappear, you know, from this world. I don't want to deal with anything that's going on with my life. I'm just overwhelmed. You know, I know that a lot of people, what they don't name, they, they don't go through that, you know. They, but for me, you know, I know that for some, you know, we do go through that. If we allow, they, they can you know, get to us. That's going to eat us up. And, you know, I also felt hopeless. I, I, I knew there was a God, you know, but then, Somehow, I became hopeless that there was no salvation, you know, like, like I said, I focused more on my problems than turning back to Christ. I wanted to share a personal testimony with you guys. You know, sometimes when I, I th- when I think about it, I'm like, you know what, all the depression that I've gone through, the enemy uses my own family as a, something to, to get to me. And I think for the longest while I fell into deep depression because as I stated earlier, I always felt that I'm not a good enough mother you know, for my, my children. I'm not a good enough wife for my husband because and I always judge myself. Like, oh, I, I'm not this, I'm not that, you know, like I, that's something that I think that's why I fell into deep depression because I knew what I needed to be as a daughter of God, and I felt like I couldn't get there because of, of all of the temptations and thoughts that were filling up my mind from the enemy. You know, I stand here with a humble heart to let you know that, you know, I'm, you know, I said earlier, I, I'm a sinner, you know. I really want to share my story with you to, to give you assurance and courage Courage that, well, Beijing, we we have to accept that, and we allow God to use that to help us grow in our faith. You know, God blessed me with such a loving and patient husband. You know, but you both did that. My husband will be the perfect companion for me. He, you know, my husband has the qualities of a godly man. Not listed here, you know. My my husband, he's a man of integrity. He's forgiven. He's so you Now, if he's wrong, he admits he's wrong. He's a really humble individual, and he's a peacemaker. He gets along with everybody that he meets. You know, but I guess I was feeling unhappy with my husband because he was a man of short words, sometimes little words. And that really got to me because I think as a human being, they being took on companionship now, y'all. And for so many years, I'm like, you know, you want to get or you, you know, you want to talk to your husband about how, you know, how your day went, whether it's good or bad. Like, like I always tell my husband, because when you bomb down, you just like there, you don't know how to respond back to me. And for me, like I, I guess I took that deep into my heart because I felt like I was missing something. You know, and I was just so depressed for so many years. So if I want to have a conversation with my husband, like God just built him that way, where he's just a man of few words, and I, I, I didn't accept that. You know, and it was it was hard. It was so hard for me. You know, but as I think about it, you know, because I'm a type of If God gave a husband that was the same. As myself to me, but because God knew that I needed a husband who's patient because I needed to, to learn from him, I need to change. Vice versa, you know. God encouraged me, help him become a, a, a more confident person. 
um, you know, one of my other desires for my husband for the longest too, you know, because growing up in a Christian family, like, you know, we always have that in our mind that, you know, or you got to look for something that, you know, so I've always had that in the back of my mind that, okay, I got to find a husband that knows God. And, you know, my husband, he grew up in the um, Catholic church, so it's a little different from a Christian um, perspective, no, y'all. And I think for me, what you're has because God wanted me to help him grow with his faith, because he was never really active in his church. He didn't know what it was to have faith. And part of my desire for the longest was, I wanted a husband who loves God and be able to serve God, will, you know, with his heart and to take lead as a Christian father. And then I think for me, why I fell into depression, because I felt like I had so much load on my plate. Like, I felt like I was the one that was leading the family, you know, spiritually. And at times when I'm weak, I feel like, hey, I want you to, like, hey, can I pray for you, you know? But for me, I felt like I was always the one doing that for our family. And that really got to me. was that. And then made me fall into great depression because I felt like, you know, I, I want you to do that. But when I think about all the blessings that but you want to go out for my husband is because God was using me to help my husband grow with his faith in Christ. You know, fast forward to now, you know, from you know, ten years from now, I've seen God move my husband. You know, he's now, you know, the He's open to serving God, and he's such a patient, loving, and he supports me when I'm serving God. You know, he, the young day, sometimes they, some husband, I y'all, you know, you about your day, no man, like a key, you know, you about your day, no, like they, they're like, um, they, they monitor your schedule. But I'm just so blessed that, but you move in my husband to allow him to, to, um, to be open with me, serving God, you know, loving unto others. And when I focus on the bad things that, I guess the desires that I was, I guess I was being selfish. I was just thinking about, my, about myself. You know, I wanted my husband to be this, I wanted my husband to be that. He couldn't meet my needs, you know? So I feel like, like God, why did you give this husband to me? I was frustrated. But now I think about it, I'm like, you know, it's because that was God's plan for me. You know, he, he gave me a husband that's so humble. I think it's a good thing to look to and I the call. You know, sometimes you want to see you. She can she cannot you know if you're like you know, having miscommunication and you gain it, then you're gonna like it's gonna be a war, but for me I'm like, okay, sometimes you want misunderstanding, I could gain it back in it today, go get go, you know, I'm like, okay, I feel stupid. Okay, just move on, you know. But you know, my husband, he he's a good husband. Um, and that's something that I'm just so blessed to, to have and to see. And it kind of takes us back to, you know, the enemy's scheme. You know, what is Satan's plan against us? You know, he used his plan to make me fall into temptation. You know, to make me focus on what I didn't have. It made me think that, hey, you know, I don't, you know, th that's not a good husband for me, you know? I want him to be like this and like that. And I, the enemy used that to get to me. But you know, but when I, when I continue to seek God's advice, God opened up my heart to see that, hey, stop focusing on the things that you don't have, but focus on what I can do as a wife to help my husband you know, become the husband that I want, to help him, um, you know, what shame they don't know, you know, help him to, I guess, learn how to communicate, you know, because maybe, like I said, you know, John Badani, um, you know, I don't know what my husband's gone through when he was a child. You know, maybe he didn't have that communication with, you know, his family that led him to become a person. So God put me here so that I can help my husband, you know, change into the man that he needs to be for God. And God gave me him so that I can change to be the right person daughter for, for God. I'm going to move on to, um, let's see here. I'm going to move on to my next text.
testimony here. You know, motherhood matters. You know, when I was falling into the deep depression, God used my, my oldest, my son. I'm not God, I'm saying, Satan used my son against me. Why I say that? Because, you know, he's a child. Like, people, even till today, people won't believe it if I, if I explain to them, like, hey, you know, my, like now my oldest, he's so mellow, but boy, when he was two to 10 years old, he was like Dennis the Menace. A kid, dude, kid, dude, kid. He was just so curious. He would get himself in trouble. And, you know, like he wouldn't think, he wouldn't think before he'd do things. And he always got into so much trouble, like at school. Like every time I look at my phone and I see like the school calling, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I have anxiety. Like, I know he did something at school. That's what they're calling me. And, you know, from age two to 10, like, I was going through so much because, you know, like, like what happened? That might. You know, my husband in Lucha Chucky told you it's not the discipline the case. Like I feel like everything fell on me. You know, my husband, he was a, he used to be a truck driver, so I would drop off my son at school. I would pick him up from school. So I felt like I was a single mother. I just had so much on my plate. And then when my son was whenever he get he got into trouble, like I always felt like I was the one like dealing with the situation, going to school, disciplining my child, and I just I was just so overwhelmed. You know? But now I think about it, you know, fast, you know, fast forward to now, like, he's like a totally changed child. He's, he's so different. I'm going to talk about what took place um, before he, he changed. You know, I think it was in third grade, you know, like, he continued to cause trouble at school, you know, just doing stupid things, you know, like, when he was little, like, he'll just take kids' stuff and break it, carry a you know, or maybe he'll like get a scissors and just cut off somebody's shoelace. So I would get calls from the school. I'm like, God, so ridiculous. Like, why is he doing this? And you know, you, I would talk to my son and, and you know, he's just a child. But I think as a, as a mother, Nikki, I, I fell into deep depression because I'm like, God, like, I'm just, like, he's just putting me through so much that like, I don't know what to do. You know, there was this one time where I think he was in third grade, as I mentioned earlier, and um, he found a knife at school. And when the school called me, like, hey, your son brought a knife to school, and I'm at work, it's like 3 p.m., I'm thinking, like, did he bring, like, a butter knife to school? Like, like what, like, why, why, you know? But when I got to school, like, I guess, um, he found a, a carpet knife. It's a knife for y'all. Um, the sheiks, they used to, they use it, um, y'all, I don't know, y'all, uh, Hindu, you the sheik, the more get the and I guess like they use some type of um, I don't know what you call it, not ritual, but okay, look, it's like ancient idea. So it do mean you do the yog long, what it do adult, where it do men, the sheik and the law protect them to help them become, you know, a, a, a man. And somehow my naughty child found that at school, right? It's funny because um, he was so naughty that. Um, he got sent to the office, so he was just sitting in front of the office, and he found that knife like on the um, brochure dispenser. I mean, until today, I, mean, I don't know what happened, but that's what he told me, you know. And when the school called me, I was just like, like, what are they talking about, you know? So when I got to school, they showed me. They're like, your son brought this to school, and I'm like, I look down, like, what the, what, what is this? I don't know what this is, you know. And, and like, so that time, like, he he got he got uh, suspended, like, just so much going on, and. I, I have, I feel like I was, I had to save my son, like I had to be this, the representative for him, you know, and like I mentioned earlier, like my husband, like he just, you know, I don't know what to do, you know, like so for me, I feel like, okay, I, I have to speak for my son. And during that time that we were going through all this, you know, I, I continued to lead my, my family into um, worship. We prayed together for so long. and. You know, there was a time where dancing you she could share because I think this situation happened, right? And he continued to like, give me a yogi in China. They will lie to you after uh, um, all the time. And he will tell me one thing and then he will go to school and he will tell the, the teacher something different. So there was a time where um, I think he got into trouble and, you know, he told me that, mommy, I didn't do it. And then, so I spoke for my son. I defended him. And at the end of the school, he in the whole lengthy you know, school, had to hey, you know, um, I did this. And I just felt so stupid as a mother. And I think at that time, like, 
I remember I was just so angry at my son, where I'm like, you put me through so much, and I, I spoke on your behalf, and I defended you, and you're gonna make me look like I'm, you know, I feel like, you can make me feel like I'm a stupid mom. You know, like, go with up like because, you know, I, like, I spoke to my son, you know, in and out, like, hey, did this happen, what happened? You know, they, oh, I didn't do nothing. So I'm like, okay, I believed you. You know, as a mother, you have to believe your child, give them security. And when he, and when he did that, I felt like it was like a slap in my face. And I remember we were, we were on vacation to visit my parents, and I was just so angry at my son, and you know, I had a conversation with my dad, cause he's, he's my spiritual mentor. And I told my dad what happened. I'm like, dad, I'm just so angry at my son. I feel like I can't love him. You know, like, I'm just so angry, you know, but my dad reminded me, you need to forgive for son. You know why? Because they, we're not perfect. Forgive us, and he's able to forgive us. And that made me stop, and I, I thought about it. I'm like, you know what, Dad, you're real right. And I forgave my son, and I continue to be that mother figure for him. And, you know, that kind of leads me down to the bullet points I'm showing here. Motherhood matters. Persistent prayers for our children all the time. Spiritual discernment, we gotta be the decision makers for them. We think about the future, we lead them. We gotta demonstrate our unconditional love for him. Now think back about the enemy scheme where he, he turned my, what's okay, son, y'all. He, he made me think that I can't love this child because, you know, you know, and God helped me to, you know, Continue to show that unconditional love to my, my son. He allowed me to forgive my son. You know, I, I trust, you know, I put my trust in God and my faith in God. You know, I hold to what's right. And most importantly, as a mother, you know, we have to surrender our children to God. You know, as my son was going through all this, I remember... I think in the past, like, when you told you, I, I give my, my, when you told you to, 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 and sometimes, they toss it, they, they, you know, we, we get to this routine, right, but because when I was going through so much, I'm like, you know, God, I'm gonna let go, I'm just gonna let you take control, because to be your own, I, I've done my best as a mother to help my child, and I, I can't no longer do it, and, it, you know, when I think back to see how amazing God is, is, I remember tucking my son into sleep, and he was like, Mom, I had a dream. I'm like, yeah. I had a dream that God took me to, to heaven. I'm like, okay. And the, like, he was saying all these stuff. That I'm like, oh, God, that sounds crazy. You know? But it's, it was not, it made me realize that, hey, that was God's um, confirmation to me that you need to let me take control. And my son, when he dreamed of going to heaven, you know, he was like, Mom, I was sleeping on my bed. Satan came, you know, he took, you know, he, he came into my heart and he took me out and I was in so much pain, I was so scared. And I asked God to help me and Jesus came and, you know, we went, we, we flew up past the sky. And, you know, there were so many people and we went, you know, we, we, we stopped at the moon and we were able to see the earth and, and the stars and God was telling me that, hey, you know, if the meteor comes, it's going to be so dangerous because so many people are going to die. And I'm like, I sit there and listen. I'm like, wow, okay. And then and he continued to talk. You know, we went, we traveled to heaven. Mom, it was so far away. It took so long to get there. And when we got there, Mom, we, you know, I got to heaven. And, and there was a big gate. You know, it was like so tall. And while he was describing what was in the Bible. And to, honestly, at that time, I was like, I didn't know that, hey, in heaven, you know, it says in the scripture that it's, to, um, it, I, I don't have the, the specific measurements, but it's, like, it's like a square, and so my son was describing to me that, hey, heaven was bigger than, you know, taller than the Statue of Liberty, and it was as far as to, you know, um, New York City, and then, like I said, I didn't, I didn't think nothing, because at that time, I, I've never read, honestly, I never read Revelation Re, 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 and the you know, what, what is, um, what's, what's in that scripture? He talked about, you know, 
walking up the stairs, seeing two, angel, or seeing two angels at the gate, walking up the stairs to Babaju, um, Luce, uh, God took him to see so many rooms. He said, Babaju, Pua, Ya'a, like it was full of gold. There was um, fountains of life. And he was telling me that, you know, and when I think back of that, I'm like, oh my God, that's a little crazy. So when I shared that with my dad, he was like, hey, you know, God gave your son a prophecy. And that really moved me because I'm like, you know, God, I surrender my son to you and I couldn't get to him. And for me, when my son went through that, it was like, it was just like such an eye opener you know, where I'm like, God, thank you for taking over and allowing my son to know what's right, what's wrong, to know that. But you have the more for key. So I wanted to share that testimony with you guys. I'm like, get a place to do some more. Yeah, I think our workshop ends at, let's see, double check. I think it ends at 11.50. Let me double check very fast here. Okay, 11.50. I wanted to share my personal testimonies with you guys. I, I do have a few more, but I think they showed you saw Nikkei. Probably just um, ended at this, where God used my husband and my, my children to get to me. And the demon used that scheme to cause me to go through great depression. Wanted me to give up on my, my family and my children. But God's purpose for that was he allowed that to happen. So that I can be the mother that I know that God intended me to be. So that I can be the wife that God wants me to be. What, to bring us to the scriptures, it says, Trust the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. He will make your path right. Your path straight. You know, a lot of times we think, basically, we, we uh, focus on our own understanding. We forget to put our, we forget to put God first. And this scripture gives a confirmation that whatever we're going through, we need to turn back and lean back to God. You know, what you saw Jane, the truth, the words from God is something that will give us peace and breathe life back into our lives. I want to remind you guys of this scripture here. It says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I got each of us the stress ball. I believe it's placed into your bags. It's not clinically proven that stress ball is something that will bother you, but temporarily, you know, um, I, I place the scripture here, it says, cast your anxiety on him and he cares for you. And I put the scripture here because God, God is our lifeline. As you take this home, may you use, you know, may this remind you that God is your lifeline, he loves you. You know, in conclusion, like I mentioned to you guys earlier, you know, God brought you guys here for a purpose. And for me, for me to grow spiritually in Christ, it's because I seeked him. I accept and I embrace what I was going through. You know, I continue to, I, what helped me grow my faith was my communication with God. You know, like, how are we supposed to build that communication with God if we don't talk to him? You know, I spoke to him all the time. You know, when I, I say, I'm speaking in past tense because that's not getting work from home. I don't have the opportunity to drive to, to work and talk to God. You know, I'm able to do that at home. But during that time when it's going through so much, I utilize that time to talk and conversation, conversate with God. You know, I mentioned earlier the book care. You know, this was my lifeline too. You know, you know, I was able to go on here and it was like take me to a prayer where I I was at peace. I'm like, hey, God, thank you for giving me that confirmation. And it also referenced the word of God. You know, so my tip to you is continue to have that relationship with God through prayer. Seek the word of God. And separate your, you know, the thoughts of God from the thoughts of the enemy. Satan's scheme is really to make us fall, 
because he knows that we're, we're the daughters of God. So today I want to give you confirmation that you know, God loves you no matter what you're going through. Know that you're not going through it alone. And at this time, I'm going to allow us to have a few minutes in prayer. And I want you guys to listen to the song that is going to be played. Let it be a reminder for you that, you know, that God loves you. Okay? So if you want to join me in prayer, I want you guys to, you know, go, close your eyes and meditate on this song. You know, love is the answer. Jesus Christ is love. He, he loved us so much that he died on the cross for us. sisters here today, Lord. I thank you for continuing to love them. Father, may you give them security and assurance that, Father, you are love. You are the answer in our lives. Father, I pray that the trials that we face in our lives will help us grow in our faith in you, Father God. May the trials that we face be a testimony of, Father, your victory for tomorrow. Thank you for this opportunity that you've given us this morning, Lord. I pray that your peace be with the sisters here. 
that they leave going home feeling renewed, Lord, that they would desire that relationship, that deeper relationship through Jesus Christ, Father God. Father, as we close this workshop, Father, the men's ministry or the that Help us grow spiritually stronger. Bond a relationship with you and with other fellow sisters here today, Lord. I lift every soul here into your hands, Lord. Pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.